Welcome to Parenting Kids and Dogs 101, a limited series podcast for parents who live with kids and dogs, or plan to. I'm your host, Michelle Stern, the founder of Pooch Parenting. I'm not just a certified professional dog trainer and former teacher, I'm a mom too. In each episode of this series, I hope you feel like I'm chatting with you, one parent to another, about life with kids and dogs answering common questions my clients ask me, and giving you simple solutions to make your life easier and safer. I hope you'll subscribe and join me for the whole series. And don't forget to grab the accompanying workbook at poochparenting.net slash podcast workbook. Enjoy! In this episode, number three, we're going to discuss some common signals that your dog might demonstrate to show that they are stressed or anxious around kids. Not all parents are fluent in dog body language. After all, why would you be? Many of the signals that dogs share with their bodies are things that we think we understand, even if we don't. For example, it's common knowledge that a happy dog wags their tail, right? Well, sort of. Oftentimes dogs who are happy do wag their tail, but a dog that is wagging its tail is not always happy. Did you see the subtle difference there? What I'm trying to say is there's different kinds of wags and not all wags mean the same thing. So depending on the position of the tail or the frequency and speed of the wag itself, the dog may be nervous or anxious or aroused or upset. Sometimes a dog will lower its tail really low and the tail will wag quickly or very slowly. And so we have to really know the dog in front of us in order to understand what this could mean. Additionally, it helps to study videos and be familiar with dogs in general so that you can read the dog in different situations. And luckily, this isn't something that you have to do all by yourself when you work with me or listen to some of my teachings, such as this limited series podcast, I can help you with all of the things that I have learned. So let's dive into a few common signs that you may not be familiar with. Let's start off with some simple ones. I mentioned a few earlier in the series. They include a yawn or a lip lick, and those can sometimes indicate that a dog is feeling stressed or anxious. But other body signs that might mean the same thing could be that your dog is looking away from a trigger, or perhaps they lift a single paw. All of these show that a dog might be under some stress or discomfort, and they're so easy to miss, especially as we're juggling parenting kids and dogs throughout the day. But if we want to really understand how to support our dog and ensure that they don't try to tell us they're feeling uncomfortable, and then we miss it, and then they growl or bite our kids instead, we need to start noticing these subtle signals throughout the day. Other signs of tension might include putting their ears back towards their head, a tight closed jaw, or a low tail and a very stiff body. Like I said before, it's so easy to miss these things. But once you put on your detective cap and start to notice these behaviors, you can often pick up patterns. For example, When your child is playing a video game really loudly, maybe your dog always demonstrates stress by yawning or looking away or maybe even leaving the room. And so we can begin to anticipate, oh, sweetie, you're going to play your video game. Let me move the dog to a different space so that we don't cause any distress. One of the benefits, of course, of intervening and helping your dog into some safe spaces is that your dog really learns to trust you and they also learn that if they communicate that we will listen and offer some relief. And these are things that we want to promote in a family where everybody lives harmoniously together. If you like what you're hearing so far, don't forget to grab the free workbook that comes with this limited podcast series. All you need to do is head over to my website, poochparenting.net slash podcast workbook. A common misconception is that dogs often lay down and show us their bellies because they want to be petted. And unfortunately, I've heard a lot of stories of people being bitten this way because they misunderstood the dog's intention. Unfortunately, this posture often means the opposite. 
the dog is hoping that if they're still and lay there and get small, that we'll just go away and leave them alone. So how do you know when your dog really wants a belly rub? Well, we need to look at their overall body's posture. She should approach you with a soft, wiggly body and offer herself for attention. I find that a great way to model this for our kids is to narrate the behavior that we're seeing. So if our dog comes over and is happy and soft and is asking for attention, we could say, oh, look, Pippin is looking for attention. See how he's wagging his tail and his mouth is loose? Also, if we notice that we may reach towards the dog and he runs the other direction or hides behind our legs, we can say, "Uh uh-oh, Pippin said no thank you. He's not interested in having affection right now. So overall, this is a great opportunity to teach respect for body autonomy and for a dog to be able to opt in or opt out of any social situations. Having pets and teaching our children about how to respect them is a really wonderful learning opportunity. And at the end of the day, it's a little bit strange to say this, but parenting children and parenting dogs is pretty similar. We need to use respect for both the kids and the dogs, teach them to respect healthy boundaries, and teach them that we are going to respect their communication and help them feel safe. It's only natural for questions about our kids and dogs to arise from time to time, especially as our babies grow up and our dogs mature. And if I'm being honest, it's not really worth asking for free advice from friends or even online because you can't rely on the accuracy of the feedback you're getting. If you'd like to learn more about the Pooch Parenting Society, where I offer practical life and science-based tips and strategies, ongoing support, and a safe place to share, head on over to safekidsanddogs.com. From one parent to another, I see you, and I promise that you're not alone. Thanks for listening.